Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Today's date, it is February 6th of 2017. And today, uh, my son, I helped a little bit. We moved over some of uh, Darlene's DVDs that she sells on eBay. And I've been moving stuff out of what is going to be my son's room trying to find a place to put it. And I I just don't have enough, let me turn this around here. And uh, everything goes on my bed. And then I have to get everything off my bed so I can go to bed. So I have to find a place to put everything. So, if I get tired here, I have to, clear my bed off first. Oh, let's see here. Okay, let's see. Yes, William, I, I got the patch that you sent. Nice looking patch. Springfield, Illinois Police Department, 1840. And I got your note. I do not have any patches at all. You know, I can't even remember the patches that even for I had a patrol service, my own patrol service for about a year. I don't. I think I I know that I had an American flag patch. I'm not sure what the other patch was. Surely I had another patch. I can remember the badges different places. I wish I had a collection of all the patches of the places that I worked. I wish I had a collection of all the badges for the places that I had worked. Uh, one badge I remember was for Wells Fargo. I worked for them uh, for years. Well, I worked for Pinkerton, Burns, Wells Fargo, and some other companies at I would be. A, it was a part-time job while I was working full-time hospital security for extra money. I remember the Wells Fargo badge because Wells Fargo security. We had the Western hats or whatever, you know. Uh, and the badge looked fantastic. It looked great. You could walk right up and stand right in front of it, and the badge looked good. But the only thing is, the badge was made out of plastic. It looked good. But uh, I was the only one that, you know, I was the only one that knew it was plastic. But I just didn't feel comfortable with a plastic badge. That reminds me. Oh. Back in Kansas City, Missouri, and I don't know what the, if the, it was 1970s or 1980s or whatever. Um, a security guard I don't know if he worked for uh, a contract agency or if he worked for the plaza. The plaza is, I think the plaza claims it's the first, they have some type of, the plaza gets lit up at Christmas time, fantastic. Plaza has a, has a lot of high class stores, nice restaurants, places, you know, places like that in Kansas City, Missouri. And they have their own security. Uh, service, to, and, but then I'm sure that businesses also use contract cards. But anyway, I read the paper. I don't know if I saw it on TV, but I remember well, it was the paper, and it was a security guard in a parking garage uh, was shot, and the bullet hit his badge and saved his life. And I thought, man, that's strange. What are the odds? You know, I mean, you you see things from, you know, maybe a, a documentary on a war or some type of story or whatever, somebody in the military and a Bible saves their life. Above, I mean, but you see the, you know, but I had, when I worked at St. Joe Hospital, out of 10 security officers, I two of the guys I worked with were shot. Uh, 
the bullet never hit a Bible. The bullet never hit uh, hit their badge or anything else. Both, you know, Dan Stego was shot in the intensive care unit for a long, long time, and he tried to. He came back to work for a little bit, but he had to. He was he was disabled, and psychologically, he was just not up to. Uh, he sh shouldn't be armed and whatever. And then John Gallegos was uh, shot in the chest and he managed to shoot the uh, guy who was breaking into a car. And uh, John Gallegos, though, the bullet hit him and he went down. And he, that was it. He was dead. The other guy he, that he shot managed to jump a fence and then he collapsed. I told you that that's... I told I, I haven't told the entire story all of but I told part of that story. So anyway, I, I saw this in the news. I thought that's unbelievable. Wow. And I think it was the next day or a couple of days later, the police arrested the security guard for making a false police report. He was out there at night and he got bored and he decided he took his badge off. So he wasn't totally stupid. He didn't, you know, leave the badge on and shoot it. He took the badge off and shot it. And so they arrested him. But, uh, so I would like to have a whole collection of patches for the companies that I worked for. And I'd like to have badges. I had several badges, actually. Uh, I gave those away to somebody who collected badges. I would like to have a collection of badges, but... Now, I mean, it's, I've moved, after 2000, I moved a bunch of times, and basically, I mean, it, it, a box for my computer and a few other items, you know, a couple boxes for my computer and a couple of handbags, and that was it when I moved. Everything else I got rid of, so... I would also like to have, uh, oh, I wanted to answer this. Uh, William, I want to thank you for the patch. Uh, let's see. Reply. Good looking patch. Uh, William said he's been following my videos and he really likes them for about a year. I don't know why more people don't, because uh, I've mentioned it, why they don't send me hats and t-shirts. Because I would, um, I'd wear it to be seen. I also would put a link or... Uh, something to the church or whatever, you know, whatever it was. But, of course, one thing, I don't have my address out there. There's, you people really have been nice. Everybody has been really nice to all. Uh, you know, I've got 14 thumbs up, one down. And it's, it's pretty rare for me really to get a thumbs down. Um, get a lot of nice comments. People really are nice to me. But there are some people over the years that have not been nice to me. One guy back before the World Wide Web, he was young. And uh, kept trying to hack into my system. He didn't need to hack into my bulletin board system. He never hacked in. He didn't need to because I didn't, there was nothing there to, to get. I had no... Everybody had access. I never deleted anybody's comments, uh, whatever. But, And I forget why he got upset. I think he was trying to use, yeah. What was it? Harry Hacker or something or other. And all I insisted, you didn't have to use your real name. But I just didn't want any Harry Hackers or I forget that, maybe that wasn't the name he was using. I mean, you could use the name John Smith and you could have got, you know, got in. I just didn't want any asshole name. That was a, I don't want to call it a fetish. What would it be? And, but, and I think that's what upset him because I kept setting it up that he couldn't log in that way. 
and he uh, threatened me and he threatened my kids. And uh, that was probably the first. And uh, it's probably the same worldwide. Uh, to get into the military maybe is not difficult. I couldn't get in, but it, it's not difficult. But if you go into the Navy, to get into the nuclear submarine service, you have got to be pretty smart. you got to be, you know, they check you out, whatever. He... <laughs> He called me uh, on the phone a year or so later, whatever, and he was in the, uh, well, of course, I didn't check to see if he was. He was in the Navy and uh, in the nuclear submarine service. Oh, um, so I don't want to put really put my address out there because there have been worse cases. That was kind of a, just a kid being stupid, you know kid being stupid, but there have been some other people that have, uh, I, I didn't work security my entire life. I started out as a welder. I started out uh, at a, well, wrought iron decorative iron shop for a very short period of time. Then uh, Darby Corporation, where we built uh, railroad coal haulers, came in mainly. They built some cabooses too, but I did I, one or two nights. I think I worked on the caboose, but spent all my time underneath railroad cars um, welding. And then I quit that job and I changed, you know, I worked different places, building trucks and stuff like that. I worked for the KW, well, you've heard of Kenwood trucks naturally, 18 wheeler trucks. That was one building and that was one division, the Kenworth division. And I had enough senior, seniority that uh, I could have moved over into the Kenworth division and I'd had my own little booth, my own little hoist and that kind of stuff. But I would have had to go on. I started out on midnights and then when I had enough seniority, actually they did away with the midnight shift then. So I went to second shift and then when I had enough seniority, I went to the day shift. And then I could have gotten, because I had enough seniority, to go over in the Kenworth division, but I would have had to go back to second shift and I didn't want to do that. So I stayed in the, and I was, I worked in the body shop. And uh, of course this is, I remember this truck, remember working on these. These trucks, by the way, are, they're, they're big. I don't think you can tell by any of these pictures how big they are. This is a model, yeah. Uh, because I actually own this well, someplace around here. I actually purchased this, maybe not the very same one. And my grandson, who was at the, who was living here and who was uh, grown, saw that and wondered why I had a toy, you know, and everything. And I said, "Well, I used I used to build these kind of trucks. I worked in the body uh, part. I built these parts here. I built the the body of the uh, trucks." And he he said, "You did not." And I said, "Yeah, I did." And he said, "You didn't." And I, I said, why would I lie about building railroad cars and building trucks? I mean, you know. But they were big. Some of our people, we built these. Some of these trucks that we built, we had to, well, I mean, this, this here, this truck, this body here, we, we loaded it onto, after it was painted and what have you, uh, we loaded them onto railroad cars. And of course, it was upright. They went out that way. Some of the other trucks, we actually had to build them, take them apart, and they got shipped like to South Africa. And some of our guys got to go over actually, if you had enough seniority, I didn't have enough seniority. Go to South Africa, then they took the parts down into the underground, into the mines, and then our guys reassembled the trucks. So, but I wish I had some pictures of now with digital cameras and all that type of stuff, probably 
you know, people now, I'm sure, have selfies and other pictures of whatever they're doing. So they'll have, when they get to be 75 years old, they'll have pictures from grade school, high school, every job they ever, every, every job they ever had, there'll be a, probably a ton of pictures. I have no pictures of me welding. I have no pictures of me uh, at any of the places. Uh, well, I think you saw that one picture. I saw it someplace. Uh, but yeah, I just don't, I wish I had some uh, had some of those pictures. This was a good, I was, well, we were well paid, union job, United Auto Workers Union. We were well paid. But with my hearing loss in both ears that I have and have had since I was in grade school, I really should not have been working in that environment. Uh, I've mentioned this before, my problem, a major part of my problem is if there's noise, something going on, I can't hear. My, my brain does not do the calculations to realize there's a person standing right here, your supervisor, or your boss is standing right here talking to you, telling you he wants you to do something, and there's noise grinding going over here, sledgehammers being used on steel over here, overhead crane, all that kind of stuff, and it all comes into my head equally. And even though this, you know, so I really shouldn't have been working there, but I really didn't want to quit, but my wife, insisted. Damn her. Uh, so anyway, I'm going to show you those pictures. Uh, I was thinking about, I think I saw something on the story time. I don't know why, I just happened to think about it the other night. I'd totally forgotten about it. Something happened, I saw something. Uh, one of the part-time jobs I had, they uh, had me working someplace, and they call, they, they call up and say, okay, we want you to go over for a couple hours to this uh, office building, and we're gonna have you working there on Saturday and Sunday, 12-hour shifts. So I went over, and the person over there showed me around and told me, here's, you know, okay, here's the book that tells you what you need to do and now you need to go, these doors over here get chained up at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. or whatever. And of course it was doors to be locked, but these here, you know, these doors here, they get, they're, the chains are here and you put the chains through them to chain them off. And I said, those are fire exits. And the guy said, well, yeah, they want them chained up. And I said, you can't chain up fire exits. Yeah, that, that's what they want. That's what you have to do. That's what we've been doing. I said, no, I'm not chaining up any fire exits. And uh, so anyway, then I came, that was just an orientation for a couple hours. And so then I come back and it was a female officer who was working that I was going to, well, I thought I was going to be relieving. And in all those security, contract security, man, when, when you'd come in the door, the other person would throw you the keys and be out the door and they usually wouldn't tell you either they didn't know anything because they were uh, new themselves and nobody knew what to tell them or but anyway uh, I came in and and she didn't jump up and leave right away and I, I said okay something's going on because I'm standing there and uh, she's just sitting there and she just has this look on her face like ha, 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 you know and I didn't really think, I should have figured out what it was, but I thought something's happening, going on, what's going on here? And then she answers the phone. This is like 6 a.m. in the morning on a Saturday or a Sunday morning or something, you know. She answers the telephone and then she says, yes, Mr. So-and-so, he's here. And then she hands me the phone and she still has this, this little grin on her face, you know, like, ha, ha, ha. And it was the manager of the, contract guardians. I forget, I don't know if it was Pinkerton, Burns. I forget who it was, which company it was. 
And he said, Jim, I heard that uh, you said that you couldn't lock up those fire exits. Uh, uh, we need you to lock those up. That's what our client wants us to do. And I said, well, I can't lock up the fire exits. I refuse to lock up the fire exit. I'm not going to lock up the fire. Well, Jim, uh, he says, I know you have a lot of experience and whatever, but we have to do what our, our client wants done. And I said, uh, no, you shouldn't be doing it. I sure am not going to do it. If it's against the law, it is a crime to lock up those fire exits. Uh, if somebody were to die because they couldn't get out those fire exits, I would be liable, you'd be liable too to a lawsuit, but also I could go to, I could go to jail for manslaughter. And uh, I said, I'm not, and then so he, he took, oh, well, Jim, we need it. And I said, no, I'm not doing it. And he said, oh, okay, well, go on home. We'll find you some other job. So then she wasn't smiling, by the way, because the way that works, you know, you're at your post working a 12-hour shift, and you're watching and watching for the, the guy to come in to relieve you, and you're watching for his car to pull in or whatever, and then let's say it's supposed to be, he's supposed to be there at 6 a.m., and of course they never get there early, but it's 6, so it's 6 a.m., not there. So you think, okay, well, he's running a little late. So you wait till 6.15 or whatever. Then you call the company and they say, well, we don't know. And then you call, they'll say, we'll call you back. And then they call you back and they say, well, he, your relief can't make it. Uh, could you work another 12 hour shift? And then if you say, no, I can't. Okay, well, we'll try to get somebody over there to relieve you. So, so you know. So I don't think, you know, I, I, when I left there, I thought, I thought, bitch, you're not smiling now, are you? Because she might have been there for another 12-hour shift. So that's my story. Um, many years later, I don't know if they were still working, but uh, the hospital corporation that I worked for took over 11 hospitals, one of the hospitals they took over, that was their medical building or a medical building. And uh, I don't know if they had, if they were using Baptist security for that medical building, probably they were still using a contract guard agency, but by that many years, they'd probably gone through a whole bunch of, you know, I didn't call, you know, I didn't call the fire department and, you know, report a violation or whatever. I didn't do that. But, so what did I, what have I got marked here? Here's my wish list. Going to take this camera off because my son is selling me back, although this is a much better camera. Uh, take this one off too. I've got a TP-Link router. Oh, I forgot I got, I let two cats in here from outside and I got the door open. Hang on a second. Let me get those cats out of there. See if they've left. in here. Oops, wait a minute, where are you? Oh, um. oh, take this one. Well, I have an LX7. I'd like to have an LX10, but... Oh, I have a TP-Link, so I don't... 
Now with Darlene moving over here and she's wheelchair bound, I may get this TP Link smart plug. I don't. I can't think of anything that she would need to uh, voice. You know, say turn on or whatever. I have a nice. Um, wow, I think this went up in price. Twenty-nine inch ultra wide IPS monitor. But I think I've decided I don't like these ultra wide monitors because you see I switched back again. Uh, need to order this hand mannequin for my she sells rings also on eBay anyway I need to go through my wish I put stuff on there that uh, kind of keep track of I do think I am going to get the Chromebook Plus convertible I hope it's not a mistake because as you know I did not like the uh, Let's go full screen here. There we go. If you're watching, I think yesterday's video, you saw me, I think I switched keyboards while I switched back again. I'm full. I made a couple chicken. I took a couple chicken, frozen chicken things, cooked them in the oven for 400 at 400 degrees for 20 minutes and then I had some bread and I put mayonnaise on it and onion and I had a, and then I made some a whole can of green beans for myself and uh, then Darlene called and said that uh, Jimmy my son had ordered in Chinese food so I ate the chicken and then they called me with a Chinese food get out here and I went over and came over and had Chinese food. I am 230 pounds. So, I think that is, I think that's it for today. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hang on a second. I love that music. It's in my blood. My family came from Ireland, County Cork in Ireland. Okay, thank you very much for watching.